kick off our time talking about video and after effects, let's talk about chroma key or green screen. This is the act of removing or making transparent a given color in our footage. This is a very common thing to see when working with footage instead of After Effects. Whether it's for an interview or more of a special effects shot, it's very common for us to need to pull out a color from some clips. Now this doesn't have to be green. It could be blue, it could be neon orange, any color that is kind of artificial, that doesn't exist in the natural world or skin tones is, is the best option. This is why we see a lot of that fluorescent green and that very fluorescent blue inside of these effects shots. I wanna talk about the effect that After Effects gives us called key light to remove those colors. Key light's a really robust and amazing effect. In fact, it's won a lot of awards. And then I wanna talk about what happens when we have difficult keys, when we have poorly lit footage? Because remember, as motion graphic artists, we're not usually the ones filming this footage. That's the job of a video producer. Our job then is to receive this footage and make the most of it. And that requires us to learn some good tips and tricks on how to make difficult green screen work well. So let's first talk about that key light effect, and then the next tutorial we'll talk about different types of mats to make those difficult keys work for us. For this exercise, I've given you a video of a chef on green screen and a kitchen background image. Let's go ahead and download those now and import them in your project panel. Once you've done that, take your green screen chef file and drag it down to your timeline to create a new composition. I'm gonna fit this to the screen. Now this is just a video clip of a guy, almost like he's from like a 90s sitcom, where he's throwing the towel over his shoulder and smiling cheesily at the camera. It's almost like he needed his name popping up right here for his uh, cheesy sitcom intro. This is a great green screen though. It's very consistent and it'll be very easy to pull a good key. This is why I'm using this as our first image. Now let's talk about the different green screen effects that After Effects has. We can either come up to Effect in the menu bar, then come down to Keen, or we can come over here to our Effects and Presets tab and toggle down the Keen folder all the same. Either of these are fine. I'm gonna use my Preset tab over here. Now we have a whole bunch of different effects for Keen. And it can be kind of confusing as to which ones are good and which ones we should be using. While I have had instances of using several of these, I want us to focus on the industry standard effect built in After Effects, and that's called Key Light 1.2. This Key Light effect has won awards, and it's a very, very robust effect. Let's take Key Light 1.2, and if your clip is selected in your timeline, just double click the effect to apply it. In your Effect Controls tab, we're gonna see the key light effect applied. We have several options here and a whole bunch of pull downs that each contain a whole bunch of options. This is why key light takes some time, it takes some finagling to get a good result. However, because this is a well-lit green screen, it's gonna be really easy to pull a good key. So let's just talk about the basics of key light and we'll get into the more difficult instances later. We have a view pull down up here, and we could view different aspects of this clip throughout our green screening process. It defaults to final result, which means as we start to key out the green, we're gonna see the alpha channel behind it. And we'll talk about some of these as we go, but let's just keep this on final result for now. We'll keep this box that says unpre-multiply result checked, and then the screen color. It defaults to black, that's just kind of the base. Let's take this eyedropper here, click on that. You'll notice now we can drag this wherever we want. We're gonna come over here to the subject in our composition panel. Now we should always try to eyedrop the area of a screen that's closest to the subject. The reason being is that sometimes as we get further out, and we'll see this in the next tutorial, the further out we get, the less consistent the green becomes. We want these edges to be really crisp and clean, so we should try to eye drop the area of green closest to the subject. I'm gonna key out. I'm gonna click right here next to his cheek and shoulder. When I do that, depending on what color background your composition was set up with, mine is white, you're gonna see the green disappear. 
Now, this is the alpha channel. Don't be fooled. There's no white solid behind him here. My composition settings have a background color of white, so we're just visualizing alpha as white. We could always come down here to the button at the bottom of our composition panel and toggle on the transparency grid, and now we can see the transparency for what it is. And as we move throughout this, we can really see this is a good key. Really clean edges. Even the motion blur doesn't have a lot of uh, green in its edges. It's nice. But how nice? How can we tell if we didn't miss any areas inside of the subject itself? Well, this is where the view pulldowns come into play. Let's come up to the view pulldown where it says final result. Toggle that down. So we could view the source. And if we click on source, we're just seeing the original clip before we applied the effect. So source and final result are kind of polar opposites here. I want to come to screen matte. Click on screen matte. What we're seeing here is alpha and the subject as black and white. We're seeing it as luma values. This is really helpful because as we go to adjust some of these settings, we can start to see the areas that didn't get fully pulled out or got pulled out too much, resulting in a kind of semi-see-through subject. So the screen mat is kind of your superhero view to make sure that your edges are good and that there aren't any problem areas inside. Well, since this is such a good key, we literally don't have to adjust anything. This is a really solid clip for a green screen example. But I want to create an issue just so we can start to see what that would look like. Let's come up to the screen game. This is how intense key light is removing that green. If I start to increase this, we start to see some problem areas. Now, this is kind of normal on a regular green screen. It's not super well lit, it's just kind of decent. We're gonna see this kind of black pattern a lot. And since we're viewing this as a screen mat, we're viewing anything that's black as transparent, which means anything that's black, even the details of our subject, those are transparent areas. Well, we never want our subject to be semi-transparent. We want them to be solid. The goal in our setting adjustments then should always be a solid white subject and a solid black background. And we do that with things like the screen gain. So you can see I, I increase the screen gain a whole lot just to create the problem areas here. If I go back to my final result, we start to see that it's eating away at those areas of the subject. That's bad. Back to screen matte. And so obviously the screen gain would never need to be that high because this is great by default. We don't even need to adjust that. Defaults to 100. But you can see if I go below, now it's starting to bring back, it's starting to white out everything else. And that's solid and we don't want that either. So it defaults to 100. Going higher is gonna remove more things that it considers green. Going lower is gonna kind of put some of that back. We want to adjust it until we see a solid white subject and a solid black background. So now that we have our subject keyed out, we can bring our view back to final result. We can come back to our project and let's take our kitchen background and let's drag it beneath the subject. Layer order matters here. If the kitchen background were on top, he would disappear. So our backgrounds for green screen always need to be below the keyed out subject. Now what's great about green screen is I can grab him and move him wherever I wanted. He could even be kind of popping out of the oven if I wanted him to. Or, let me control Z, I can frame him a bit further to the left to kind of create room for maybe a title here. So now if I play this back, looks really nice. Clean edges, his hair isn't eaten away too much. The last thing that I would do is apply a basic blur effect to the background. Getting backgrounds to look natural is kind of half the difficulty in getting a good green screen look. We always want to make sure that it would replicate what an actual lens on a camera would be doing should he have been filmed in an actual kitchen environment. In this case, it looks like he was filmed with a medium tight shot, and so a zoom lens would have a slightly blurred out background, not this crisp. And so let's come over to our blur and sharpen effects, and let's come down to Gaussian blur. 
Let's apply this to the background layer. Gaussian blur has blurriness and has blur dimensions, which we're gonna keep on horizontal and vertical. So let's just start to increase the blurriness for our Gaussian blur. And obviously too much, it starts to look fake yet again. So there's a fine balance here. Blur it out just enough to make it look natural. Around 18 looks decent for me. So here we have our first composite using key light. This just covers the basics using a clip that has a really good screen to work with. If I click on my clip here, again, we use the key light effect. We talked about the different view options under the view pull down, and we talked about how to use the eyedropper for the screen color to eyedrop an area closest to the subject to remove the screen. We then added a background and added some slight blur for a realistic in-camera look. This is basic chroma keying inside of After Effects. In the next tutorial, we're gonna work with screens that are less than favorable and learn some tricks and tips to help us get around that.